Good day to members of the media and the listening public. After adjusting for inflation, the GDP in constant prices decreased by 1.7% in the second quarter of 2022. The level of economic contraction was a direct result of increased inflationary pressure as GDP in current prices increased by 2.2% during the quarter. Consumer spending increased 4.9% year-over-year to $771.5 million. Consumption of services increased 5.3% year-over-year, reflected in higher expenditure for accommodations, air transportation, and personal care services during the second quarter of 2022. Employment income in the second quarter was 9.4% above 2021 levels. Industries such as hotels, restaurants, and international business reported strong growth in employee remuneration. Tourism arrivals and expenditure were up as Bermuda's tourism industry reopened for leisure and business visitors. The island hosted 48,646 air visitors during the second quarter of 2022, up from 16,935 in the second quarter of 2021. Estimated expenditure by air visitors increased to 97.8 million from 31.2 million recorded in the second quarter last year. Consumption by the government increased 3.3% during the quarter with higher expenditure on wages, salaries, and employee overhead. Furthermore, gross capital formation declined 0.3% to $197.8 million. Investment related to construction fell 4.4%, while investment in machinery and equipment increased 3.9% due to higher imports of electric motors and generator parts air conditioners, and motor vehicles. Bermuda's trade with non-residents resulted in a $237 million surplus for the second quarter of 2022, down $76 million from a year ago. The decline in Bermuda's trade surplus was primarily due to external balance of goods and service decreasing by 17.2% as a direct result of increases in imports of goods and services. The imports of goods and services increased 19.1% as payments rose for higher imports of finished goods, fuel, and food. Payments for air passengers and freight transport and travel service services also grew as residents took more trips than the previous year. As it now stands, Bermuda's trade and financial assets and liabilities with the rest of the world resulted in a net international investment position of $4.9 billion at the end of the second quarter of 2022. This balance decreased by $1.2 million over the first quarter of 2022 due to a fall in liabilities associated with reduced holdings of other investments and loans. Total business registration increased by 3.1% compared year over year bringing in the complete business register to 16,193. There were 258 new businesses registered in Bermuda during the second quarter of 2022, an increase of 7.1% from the previous year. While the government continues to facilitate the expansion and sustainability of Bermuda's economy, we also recognize the critical role of employers, business owners, and consumers alike. The government will continue to create an environment that encourages economic growth while providing opportunities for Bermudians. For further information, please review the 2022 second quarter balance of payments and international investment position publication and the second quarter GDP by expenditure publication, which is available at the Department of Statistics website at gov.bm. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Hayward. Uh, at this time, I welcome questions from the media.
Good morning, Minister. Uh, Jasmine Patterson from Bermuda Broadcasting, ZBM. Um, thanks for your statement today. Um, so I suppose, um, you know, an economic recession is, is predicted in the U.S. and globally. I, I wondered what stopgap measures the government intends to implement to, um, to sort of buffer uh, that reaching Bermuda shores. And so um, we will continue to execute on our economic growth and development strategy. That is ensuring that we continue to um, have business retention and expansion in our local economy, ensure we continue to market um, Bermuda as a reputable business jurisdiction so that we can continue to address um, businesses, but assist businesses on the island to continue to thrive in our economy. Sure. Um, we do, we are experiencing, as indicated in the statement, um, high inflationary pressure. Um, that will continue for some time until that issue abates worldwide. Um, but I think that we are still on a good trajectory. If you listen to the economic indicators that I did roll off, majority of them show that the economy is trending in the right direction. Where we do have somewhat of a, um, what, what I'll call it to be uh, anomaly this quarter, is that we have a high level of imports. A high level of imports um, works against economic growth for the quarter that those imports are registered. But then those imports will be associated with production and consumption in other quarters, so we expect to see growth in other quarters. Sure. I mean, do you, um, you know, based on um, you know, your research, do you have an indication of, of when we could see um, sort of inflation uh, peaking? The um, global economic environment is one of uncertainty. Um, I don't think we can predict when um, supply chain issues will be resolved. I can't, we can't predict the prices of food. Um, and so we are doing things to reduce um, the erosion of purchasing power that citizens are facing in the country. Um, through what we're doing in terms of trying to reduce food prices and other measures. And we'll continue to look at measures as to how we will create some level of relief to absorb some of the increases in prices that we're experiencing on the island. Sure. Um, the Tynes Bay uh, Waste Energy Facility, that was listed as one of the key economic um, sort of uh, projects to help stimulate growth. Um, can you say what sort of impact that's having on the economy at present in terms of activity? I believe that the um, Minister of Works indicated that there was significant capital funds set aside for um, work to be done on the current facility, but then there is also a future plan for complete redevelopment. But that work that is done and that injection of capital in that facility comes as gross capital formation and in, in investment. And as a result, um, it will have a positive impact on local investment. Sure. Um, I wondered if the um, current economic crisis has any impact on attracting foreign direct investment. Do you see any new avenues in that area? I think where investors are having issues with um, the cost of capital, um, and that's borrowing funds to invest in the economy, um, certainly um, that would have an impact. And I think that's part of the challenge that we've seen with the reopening of Fremont of Hampton, um, where they've had to do some level of renegotiation based off of um, the capital markets. Sure. The Bermuda Business Development Agency, they recently came back from uh, Como in Italy. Um, they said that they are attracting more investors to the island, but when, how, how, when are we seeing that come to fruition, if anything? I think we, we see gradual um, progress in those areas. If you look at business investment, if you look at um, new business startups and the businesses and, and the expansion of our international business community, 
um, is a result of the ongoing work that we're doing in that particular sector to continue to retain businesses but um, expand in that area. And if you look at um, any of the data, it sees that we're continually trending positive in that area. Um, we can't gloss over that IB increased by 8% year over year um, in 2021. That was the largest year over year increase since 2007. And in the pandemic period, that particular sector did not abate. So that is real growth and progress being made in that area. Thanks. And just lastly, do you have um, a number of how many new businesses were started in this quarter? Or sorry, the second quarter? There were 258 new business registered during the second quarter of 2022. Okay. And that was up 7.1% from the previous year. Okay. Thank you very much. Morning, Minister. Thank you. Morning. Gareth Finnegan from the Royal Gazette. Um, first question I'd like to ask is, is you, you, you say that we're heading in a good trajectory and, and uh, trending positively, but that's compared to last year. What about comparing Bermuda to 2019? Because it's all right saying all that, you know, things are increasing on 2020 when we were in the midst of pandemic, but uh, obviously compared to 2019, why don't you use that as the real figure for, for comparison? Otherwise you're giving a distorted picture, aren't you? I don't agree with that. I don't agree that we should gloss over that a pandemic actually took place and there is a level of recovery that is required. Um, I don't think that we go through that sort of global shock and then act like it did not occur. We are in a recovery period as a result of those events and so we're going to monitor performance year over year and we're gradually trending in the right direction. Certainly we want to move back to pre-pandemic levels. We are not there yet but that is where we're actually trending. Well, you can't really go much lower, can you? I mean, if, you, if you're at rock bottom, you can only go up, but we're still way behind 2019. I don't agree that we're at rock bottom, but I do accept that we're trending in the right direction. Okay. Uh, one of the ways of increasing GDP is to increase the population. I think you said earlier this year, um, at the beginning of the year, um, you said that uh, Bermuda needs to increase the population by 8,000 people over the next five years. Um, what are you doing to achieve this? And do you have any stats to show that the population isn't increasing at all? Has it increased over the last six months? Are people who, who, who've left by their thousands, apparently, in, over the last couple of years, are they beginning to come back? Do you have any uh, positive feedback at all on that? Our plan is to not just increase the population, but we're focused on increasing the working population. Sure. Um, the Ministry of Economy and Labour will do full rounds of consultation over the next several weeks and months to ensure that we have a strategy in place to um, increase the working population, one that all stakeholders um, can accept and one that the entire country can collectively move towards. But and so what I would say is it is our desire to increase the working population we are formulating a strategy. We will do full consultation. And once that consultation is completed, we will publish that strategy for the entire um, community and all stakeholders. So in um, other words, no progress absorb. has been made in the last nine months, because you said that nine months ago. I disagree with that. I think what we've done, we wrote out a policy paper which shared with the country the challenges that we would have around the aging population. From that policy paper, the next step, once everybody accepts that is a genuine issue, the next step was to work with all stakeholders to ensure that we have a roadmap as to how we achieve the benchmarks that were set out in that particular policy paper. And that's the work that we're currently doing now. So when do you think this uh, plan will finally be put into action? First quarter of 2023. Okay. Um, on to inflation. Um, Yesterday's figures showed that there was uh, a 15% increase in uh, fuel and power prices year on year. Um, grass, gas prices at the pump haven't, uh, haven't risen thanks to government intervention. Is there anything that government could do to uh, keep the price of, of electricity down? Obviously, that would help businesses massively. It's one of their major overheads. Um, could, could government work with Belco to, to, I don't know, do something to get the, that price down? because people are always complaining about how their electricity bills are, are, are increasing month on month. 
Certainly. So there are uh, certain um, industrial sectors that are driving uh, inflation rate, and I think that um, it's important for us to look at each of those sectors and see what, what is actually um, behind those inflation numbers to see if any policy uh, measures can be put in place to um, reduce the inflationary pressures in those areas. Okay, you mentioned several industries, local industries, uh, driving inflation. Um, and, and we keep on hearing about how inflation is being caused by the fact that we have to import everything and it's the overseas jurisdictions that are suffering massive inflation and then we get the, the, the um, consequences of that. Um, but are you concerned that, that you know, we're coming to the end of the year, next year people are going to be expecting pay increases, um, which obviously will drive up the cost of doing business if, if those pay rises do go ahead. Are you concerned that um, there are um, on-island factors, not just overseas factors, that, that are rising, are driving inflation? And is there anything that the government can do to mitigate that? I think what you're going to see is um, the government utilize um, fiscal policy through the budgetary period to try to ease some of the um, pressures that individuals are experiencing, both businesses and residents. And so uh, I don't want to preempt the pre-budget report that will be coming out from the Ministry of Finance, but you should see fiscal policy, which is in alignment with what you've just articulated. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Um, on to the ERP. Um, so we got the, the, the cornerstones of, of the uh, ERP, casinos, Tynes Bay, uh, East Hamilton Economic Empowerment Zone, and Vertical Farming. Can you give us an update on, on those, please? What's happening with casinos? So those are uh, uh, what I'll consider to be, instead of cornerstones, lead initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, we do have 31 initiatives. What I will um, do is ensure that the website is appropriately updated so that all the updates on each of those projects can be um, disseminated to the public. We it do hasn't been updated in months. Could you provide us with an update now So, on casinos? As a result from casinos, we have no real movement since the last update. Since this license were issued, we have no um, further update on dates as to when the first casino would actually um, open. But what I would say is that um, we will populate the website so that the entire public is aware of the progress that we're making on the ERP new items. Okay. Um, when did you first find out that uh, Calera had put its uh, overseas operations on hold? We uh, ran the story last Thursday, a week ago. When, when did you actually learn that that was the case? I believe that the BEDC did communicate something to me as it pertains to me having communication on that particular issue as a result of internal dialogue that Clara was having. And, and I'm when not was that? fully, but what I'll say to you is I'm not fully cognizant of what is happening within Clara, except for the message that the BEDC actually gave to me. I don't have the actual date, but um, I'm not intimately involved in any of, or knowledgeable about any of the operations. So you, you haven't Calera. spoken to Calera at all, bearing in mind that this is, this is a company that's responsible for um, holding up one of, one of the government's four key planks of the economic recovery plan. I would say that Calera is in discussion with BEC, who is their, um, slated to be their partner, and the Ministry of Economy and Labour does not have direct communication with Calera. So you don't really know what's going on with the project unless BEC tells you? BDC is attached to the project and intimately involved in the project. Sure. And yes, I do take reports from the BDC, and I do not deal with Clara personally. Okay, but so you said at your your throne speech press conference, you said that the buck stops with uh, BDC as far as the vertical farming project is is concerned. No, or, incorrect. I think you were asked the question. Um, as do, you agree, do you agree that, that uh, as far as vertical farming is concerned, or this initial uh, vertical farm is concerned, uh, the buck stops with BEDC? And you replied, yes. Surely BEDC only made a recommendation to you. You then put forward that forward to Cabinet, and then Cabinet makes the decision. It's not BEDC that makes the decision. It's you've, sort you've, of you've just outlined responsibility. A, you've just outlined a process that's not correct. Uh, in what way is it not correct? 
The BEDC um, makes a recommendation to the Ministry of Economy and Labor. The Ministry of Economy and Labor um, has legislative and statutory authority to approve the formation of a company that is associated with BEDC and also funds to transfer into that particular company. So, so it does not need cabinet approval. It is, it I, is I, in, in that case, I, I do apologize. I beg your pardon. In which case, um, the, the matter falls directly to you. The decision falls directly to you. So shouldn't the book stop with you? Why did you say that it stops with the BEDC? I, I don't want to get caught up with who the box stops with. Ultimately, so as the I minister, think it's fairly important. Ultimately, it, as the minister responsible for economy and labour, I assume all responsibility for um, approvals that I actually give. Uh, okay, one thing that is in the RP is the fish processing plant. Um, now, at your last uh, press conference after the throne speech. Um, the only thing you could say on that, bearing in mind that the ERP was put together two years ago, um, the only thing you could say was that um, you need uh, local fishermen to come on board. Um, and again, I checked the website this morning, and, and it said that uh, government's consulting with local fishermen. Um, is, what, have you been consulting for two years? And if so, how are those consultations going? Bearing in mind that there's a protest uh, a Spanish point this afternoon um, by local fishermen about uh, government action. So what's, what's happening with that after two years? I believe there was a media request put in, in for a specific answer to that question. Mm -hmm. The BEDC will be providing a response as they are also um, the lead sponsors of that particular initiative. But, but Minister, you, ultimately the buck stops with you, surely. Can we so, have answers from you? I can certainly have answers provided to you, but you provided a media query and you asked for answers. I do not have those answers at this particular time. We are not Why saying not? that had, we're you've, not... You've had advance warning. Excuse me. We are not saying that we are not prepared to answer the questions. And I indicated to you that we will provide you with responses. What you want is responses here and now, and that's something I cannot provide to you at this time. Why not? Why can't you provide those answers? So the you're answers the, you're you... responsible for, you're the minister of the economy. And, Correct. And these are, these are basic questions. You assume them to be basic, but what I'm telling you is, what, what I want to do is give you measured answers and I want to give you the appropriate answer. The appropriate answer will come from the relevant area within the government that is actually handling the process. And I'm committed to providing you with clarity. You want the clarity right now in this particular press conference, and, but I'm, I, I'm happy to provide you with that information. We've committed to providing you with that information, and that's what we will do. You keep on saying that, Minister, but we've been asking questions for weeks, and we don't get responses. So now we get an opportunity to ask you directly, and you're saying, well, I'll get back to you. Correct. You don't seem to have, you, you don't seem to be, I don't know, you don't, you don't uh, seem to be very well prepared, if you don't mind me saying. I mean, I mean these are things that you should, as, as the head of the uh, ministry, surely you should have a, an overview on all these things. I do have an overview. You've um, asked whether or not there's been consultation. I told you that there has been consultation. I told you that the, the appropriate response will come from BEDC, who is actually handling the mat matter, and that doesn't seem to be good enough for you. Minister, you keep on saying, talk about consultation and, and, and business plans and all the rest of it. This has been going on for two years, and we still don't see any results, if you like. Where's, where's the urgency? The, the, the whole point of the ERP was that it was meant to kickstart the, the, the economy and, and, and give it a short, sharp shock to, to get things move again after COVID. And here we are two years later, and, and we're still hearing things about, well, we're still consulting with uh, fishermen, but uh, I can't give you an answer as to how those consultations are going. So, so here's what I'll say. There are 31 initiatives within the economic recovery plan. You're asking for specifics on one or two initiatives. We have, an entire frame, we have an entire framework as to how we report progress on those particular items. I've directed you to the website. I've also indicated that I will provide you with clarity on the specific questions that you actually provide. I'm Unfortunately, sorry, I, I said that the website isn't being updated. One second. Unfortunately, right, that's not good enough for you, but I have committed to providing you with that information. When, when will you be able to provide me with that information? As soon as, the, as, soon as possible. How about uh, this week? 
I don't, I don't believe that the government works on the whims of the Royal Gazette. And so, I, no, I've, I've committed to providing you with the responses and the answers. But and so you keep on failing to. I asked you questions last week about Galera. I still have yet to have a response. You've, you've asked me questions. This is the first time since the pre-budget report that we've had dialogue. So we have to work through the Department of so let's, be, so let's be clear. You have not asked me any questions. No, no, no. The, the questions that you have asked me, I've committed to providing responses. I think what is in the best interest of the public is that the public get transparency on what the government is actually doing. I've committed to providing that transparency, and I've committed to providing on a timely basis. Thank you. Um, Minister Haver, thank you very much for that. Um, that is the end of the press conference today, and I wish you all to have a great day. Thank you.